Hello, 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 guys. Welcome back to my channel. Guys, I just want to take a moment to talk about Lanithia Leaks. <laughs> if you're wondering why I said that like that, it's because every time, like back in the old days, not now, but back in the old days when Bravo would do the, um, what is it called? You know, the, the, the reunion, the season reunion with all the girls and everything. Um, Andy Cohen would always call NeNe Leaks by her whole name. And that was just like a little joke between them. That was back during the good old days. Lenithia Leaks. Dude, NeNe Leaks is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters. Um, not character. She's not a character. I mean, favorite people from Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I know that she has her problematic points. You know, she's rough around the edges, and I get that. I understand that. But when you look at her background, you look at the fact that she was adopted, you know, informally adopted by her grandmother. She never really grew up with her mom, and I think her mom was on drugs. I can't be sure if her mom was on drugs, but I know that her mom was absent from her life. And um, really, she was just raised by a single, not even a single mother, but a single grandmother who was just kind of scraping by in order to provide for her and she kind of just grew up having to be a little bit scrappy and and she made her way to marrying a very successful man and you know living a very extravagant life into in comparison to what she had growing up and so it really can't surprise you that she she she's a little rough around the edges you know it's like I think back to I was telling my husband <laughs> I was telling my husband about Miss Crystal, okay? I'm not going to say last names or anything like that. But I grew up, you know, and my, my a friend of our family, her name was Miss Crystal. And she's a great cook. I mean, a great cook. And she's, of course, black. And she's, she, she was, she's a single mom. You know, she raised her two daughters on her own. And she's a great cook, you know, so every time there was a function, there was a family reunion, anything, she would be the one to throw down. And I mean with macaroni and cheese, fried chicken, collard greens, black eyed peas, I mean throw down. But Miss Crystal, honey, honey, you do not want to mess with this woman. I mean, she, she didn't smile too, too often, you know, and she she just was hard she, she was hard you know she was fierce and um I just remember growing up looking at her thinking that she was really mean you know I just thought that she was mean to my to my young brain I it didn't wrap to the fact that maybe she had experienced since experienced some difficulties in her life that made her that way but she's the type of person who was so sweet She's the type of person who will literally give you the shirt off of her back. It's just her face don't show that. <laughs> her face doesn't show that. And so, um, yeah, I think that, um, like, I think that Nene Leaks has some of that. I think that, you know, she's, she's got the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest heart. But what you see on the outside is this sternness, this hardness, this basically a shell that someone has put on since childhood because they have experienced trauma, you know, and they've experienced difficulties in life. And so I know that she gets into a lot of fights. She's threatening to, you know, pop people's eyeballs out and all that stuff. But um, beyond that, she is a person who is, you, you can see that she's very kind hearted beyond all of that. If you look at, you know, how so many women in the show basically came to her almost as like a big sister. She was often there, you know, for Portia, even though she and Portia had their stuff in the past. Portia would come to her for advice, you know, for a shoulder to cry on. Um, Cynthia, if you look at that relationship between Cynthia, and even in the beginning, which I'm going to get to, Kim Zosiak. Kim Zosiak and Nini were very close in the beginning, okay? Now... That's Nene Leaks on out of the way. Kim Zosiak. I really like Kim Zosiak. You know, as someone who grew up in Atlanta, which, you know, I have talked on here before that I feel like the Atlanta franchise, where they failed the city is that they really just could have shown a little bit more representation of the culture there. 
You know, like, there's, in the beginning, you know, like, the first two seasons or whatever, when Kim Zosiak was there, there's, like, five black chicks and there's one white woman. And even though Atlanta has a high African-American population, at least for me, you know, I went to, I mean, I grew up in in, in East Atlanta, but um, thankfully, my parents really cultivated an education for me that kind of pushed me into other circles of society within that city. And so I went to school alongside all socioeconomic backgrounds, like people who were living in projects, people who were like me from sort of fairly lower middle class or middle class backgrounds to the trust funders, you know, the, guy, the, the, the guys whose mommy and daddy's credit card paid for everything. And being in those circles, which those are the circles, if you think about it, Real Housewives of Atlanta and Real Housewives in general, they're coming from the upper middle class, you know, parts of society. And I guarantee you there's a ton of diversity in Atlanta around the upper middle class. And so I really feel like Bravo failed Kim Zosiak and put her in a bad position by just throwing her as the only token white person among a bunch of black people I mean and it doesn't clearly and I you guys I, you know I hate speaking in terms of white and black I really do like it makes me nauseous to, to speak in this way because in my daily life I don't speak in this way you know like I don't just I'm not always talking in black and white but these are the constructs that society has presented us and so that's what we have to deal with but um to put this white chick you know amongst a bunch of black people and seriously Atlanta has a high population of Hispanics. It has a high population of Asian people as well. There's a there's a prominent and vibrant Asian community in Atlanta, like um, a Muslim community in Atlanta. You seriously couldn't put anybody else of a different ethnicity other than Kim Zolciak. I really kind of feel like they put her in the shark tank in that way. The same way that people often complain about tokenism, you know, on TV where there's a full white cast, but you got the one black person, you know, that's essentially what they did to Kim and nobody ever likes that. Like, give us us some better representation. And, you know, I'm going to speak a little bit on um, Gabrielle Bouvet in this video. It's Garcelle. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Garcelle. On Garcelle Bouvet in this video, I think that they did the same thing to her and if you look at it, the way that you look at it on the show, it seems like she's race baiting all the time. It seems like she's often bringing up race, but it's really not the case. It's a reactionary thing because she is the only black person in the room. And these conversations come up when you're the only person of a certain background in a room. And so, yeah, I really just feel like they set Kim up for failure for that. They should have made the, the cast of Atlanta more representative of what Atlanta looks like from the beginning. Now, having it majority black, I'm all with that because there's a there's a big, vibrant African-American community in Atlanta. But at least put one Asian person in there, or another white person, uh, a, a, a Hispanic person. Th th throw, them so throw us something different, you know? Give us a little bit more diversity. And um, so I think that was problematic. And then I think that is what really led to the breakdown between uh, Nini and Kim's relationship and all that. I feel like she was kind of a sitting duck. And although I love Nini, we know that she can be problematic. Even when she sat down with the therapist. You guys saw when she sat down with that therapist. Initially, she could not do it. Okay, She had unresolved issues and she could not break that wall down. And you see Nini's uh, modus operandi is that she often reverts back to that angry, you know, about to bust somebody's teeth out. <laughs> you know, she always reverts back to that. But if you really think about it, it's just that scared little child in there that wants their mom, you know. And so I feel like that is the consideration that Bravo didn't really take into fact. But I feel like if Atlanta, just imagine some different world. And I, I want you guys to think about this and tell me what you think in the comments. Um, I feel like in some different world, if they would have immersed the Atlanta cast in a little bit more of a diversity um, aspect, if there was a more diverse cast and Nene was still there, Kim was still there, you know, the, the major players that we saw were still there. 
but they brought in maybe, you know, some women from the Hispanic community or some women from the Asian community or um, other women from the European ancestry pool. If they would have brought that in there, I really feel like maybe that would not have happened with Nini. Um, and I feel like if Bravo itself wouldn't have been always, you know, po poking and prodding these different little scenarios so that, you know, Nini would get into all these arguments because I feel like that's what they did. They basically just dangled the cherry in front of her or, you know, they, they've even said that they would do things where they just have them filming forever, constantly, and not feeding them, not giving them any anything to drink, not giving them anything to eat, you know, so that basically drama would break out. We know that Bravo did that. And so I think that there were so many different ways that there that could have been handled uh, in terms of tact from Bravo and being a little bit, you know, more tactful um, with their strategies of getting this salacious drama for this show and also showing more diversity in the cast. That's the first thing. But I don't want to take accountability away from Nene or Kim, you know, like Kim had her moments, that whole thing that broke out on the bus, you know, that whole thing that broke out on the tour bus with her assistant, you know, I get it, like, <laughs> Nene didn't like seeing, um, Kim barking orders to this young black girl who she was, quote unquote, said she was treating her like a slave, I get it, I get it, you know, Nene could have gone about that a different way, but Kim could have as well. Like, I really feel like what happened here, women are very prideful creatures, guys. Like, let's go ahead and admit that. Let's not pretend it's not the case. And as you grow, as friendships grow, you get more mature. Um, and I think you can really see proof of that through the fallout between Kyle and and uh, LVP and Lisa Vanderpump, you know? Like, I feel like they were older at that point in that part of the the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills than Nene and Kim were in that in their fallout in Atlanta and even still it was difficult for them you know and it's very hard I think for women who are very outspoken independent um fashionistas divas etc that you see that's what this whole show is founded upon it's also hard for them to admit when they're wrong and I feel like if both Nene and Kim would have just admitted that they were wrong, um, we wouldn't be here today. And it's also a question of circumstance and culture. Now, do you guys remember when Nene was like joning? And when I say joning, I mean making fun of. When she was joning on um, Kim about her singing. Now, something, I, I discussed this in another video, something that African Americans do, I think, you know, generally. I don't want to generalize too much, but... As my background, just speaking on this, and I think that Africans may do it as well, we basically will just nitpick at each other, you know, in a fun, playful way, basically to build resilience. I feel like this comes back to slavery. I don't know. But I feel like it's a, it's a thing of resilience. It's like, we're going to pick at you so that you go out in the world. When you go out in the world, honey, you are confident and, you, and you're not going to let anybody tear you down. Nobody. And that's probably why you see this sort of um, activism streak within black people, this confidence to continually fight for their rights is because we've always had to. And so when Nene was joning on, um, Kim singing, I don't, I don't think she was doing it in a way that was really malicious. I think she was doing it in a loving way. I know that sounds crazy for someone to be making fun of you in a loving way. You would think, like, if somebody loves you, they don't make fun of you. And that's the way that Kim was looking at it. Poor, sweet, naive Kim. I think she was looking at it as, like, if you're my friend, you don't do that. You, make, you don't make fun of me. But I, I think she didn't really see that cultural aspect of it, that Nene didn't see herself as, um, doing anything really wrong. She was just basically poking fun and she didn't want to see Kim, you know, make a fool of herself basically. And, and she didn't, you know, even like, even look at, um, Luann De La Cepes. Like she doesn't have the most amazing voice in the world, but she has garnered a certain amount of fame because of her personality. Same thing for Kim. So it, it all worked out. And I think if both of them would have came out of their feelings a little bit, you know, that could have been moved past and and Kim would probably still have been there through all of those seasons. And I, I really, really, really wish that she was because even though she had her spinoff show, 
I don't think that her potential earnings, you know, we see these things about her house going into foreclosure and all this stuff. And um, I feel like if she would have stuck it out with Atlanta, if she would have, if she would have given Atlanta really a chance and she would have given Nene a chance, that maybe she wouldn't be in this situation right now. Maybe she would still have had that lucrative opportunity that she had she had, had with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she would have been one of the OGs like Vicky Gumbelson, like Nene Leakes. Now, you see that Vicky Gumbelson and Nene Leakes, they've gone on to, uh, and Lisa Vanderpump as well. Even though Lisa Vanderpump left a few seasons back, um, several seasons back really, you still know that these businesses that LVP, that NeNe Leaks, that Vicky Gonzalez have gone on to either start or expand upon since their days with the Real Housewives have been able to experience the amount of success, especially monetary success that they have because of the exposure that the Real Housewives brought. And so I really wish that if, if we could get back in a time machine and we could go back to like 2008, 2009, whenever that was, and just tell... Nene and Kim, guys, just hug it out, let it go. You both are doing yourself a disservice because I think in the end, you know, it did Kim a monetary disservice, but also just a disservice in friendship. They're building lifelong friendships with these shows, whether they know it or not. Even, you know, the people who clash all the time, you know, look at Luann and Ramona. They, they, they sometimes form these friendships because that's what happens when you just put a bunch of bitches in a room together and just go... All right, see you later. Going to keep the, the camera rolling. You have unlimited cocktails, but you can't leave. <laughs> Just see what's going to happen. Like, some people might become friends. Um, the same way, very soon I'm going to do a video. Uh, so I started uh, reading this, this book, the autobiography from Barack Obama. And I'm just delving into all of that, you know, that that era's politics and stuff and I was looking at this video where Bill Clinton and George Bush are talking together and they're like great friends now notorious Republican notorious Democrat so that just shows you you put two people in a room you say you can't leave we're gonna keep the cameras like unlikely friendships will be built and I think that if Kim would have stayed not only would she be in a different shape and as far as mon uh, monetarily I think she would be in a different shape as far as friendships as well. I think she might still have some lasting friendships that she might not have today as a result. Um, I also want to talk about Garcelle Bouvet. Now, I love me some Garcelle and I'm so glad that she arrived at the time that she did because it was really necessary. Like looking at the time like with George Floyd and all that stuff, um, it was like that that conversation needed to be started and it was really really necessary and I feel like Bravo has a big habit of like putting all the black people in one show together and putting all the white people in one show together and then never really mixing up the cast dive in a diversity sense altogether I think they've done that in small ways with no no really no it's really only been in the later seasons that they've done that and that is just it's just reprehensible. It's just shameful. So, um, yeah, put them all together. We can all coexist. But I think that Garcelle, she often gets this, it, it, the way that the camera makes her look is that she's always talking about race. But it's not. It's because they put her in a room with just white women. Again, I don't like to speak in these terms of white and black, but it's because it is so pointedly made that way by the media. It's the same thing that happened with Kim where they just put her in a room with black women. It's a recipe for disaster. Mix up that, that diversity, guys. Bravo. You can do it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you know whenever I post a video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.